Hey guys, welcome in for Truth Talks. I am, <laughs> oh my gosh, I am, I'm excited today. I'm excited because I had, I had an epiphany that, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna digress. But anyway, so welcome in um, to Truth Talks. Marcy Batiste here, your ultimate power coach, America's number one reality-based success and recovery trainer, here to give you the tools you need to get over your stumbling blocks and take ownership of your life, relationships, and business. And so one of the things that, um, as you know, Truth Talks is always about real conversations uh, for real people going through real stuff. And so I was thinking um, how cool it would be. Like one of the things that I always wanted to do with Truth Talk was to be able to, um, you know, answer the questions that nobody wants to ask. And so I started thinking about how many times people ask me stuff like in the in my in my inbox and I, you know I, I one of the things I tell you guys all the time my inbox is open 24 7 it, it's outrageous sometimes but there are really some good questions in there and so I started thinking what if I just start pulling some stuff out of there and we're gonna do uh, you know just start answering questions on truth talks because it's easy for me to come up with the topics that I want to talk about but what I know to be true in, in you know, over 30 years of dealing with people is that if one person's asking the question, there's probably a thousand people who want to know the answer. Because um, most people just don't ask questions. They're like, oh, I don't want to ask a dumb question. And I always say, there's no dumb questions. There's just dumb people who don't ask questions. So um, welcome into Truth Talks. Again, Marcy Batiste here. I am so glad you're here. Share the video out today. We're going to talk about you being qualified. Are you qualified? Why are you questioning? Are you qualified? And this question um, actually came from a client of mine. We were talking about um, her working on her her business and, and in particular becoming a speaker. And that's not what her background is. She's never really had any experience in being a speaker. And she said to me, she was like, well, how do I know if I'm qualified? And I'm like, how old are you? And she said, uh, 42. I said, so how long, when did you, when did you first start? How, how, at what age did you start saying your first words? And she was like, well, I don't know, probably about a year old. So, so you're 42 and you said your first word when you were about a year old. So you've been speaking for 41 years, right? And she was kind of like, I never thought of it that way. And then I went on to say, I said, so um, in these last 41 years, were all of your conversations in closets? Well, no. I said, have you ever been around a table with a group of people and did you say anything? Well, yeah, okay. That's public speaking. In a nutshell, that's being able to have a thought, communicate the thought verbally, and share it with a listening audience. Your listening audience might be one person, it might be a thousand people. That's what speaking, that's all speaking is in its most simplistic form. But the bigger issue here was when she said, how do I know that I'm qualified? And so many times uh, people will second guess their qualifications when they're doing something for themselves. So for instance, if you go out and you are, I was, I was a, an executive manager for a bank for 30 years. Uh, I probably did upwards of 500 interviews, maybe, maybe more than that. I never took the time to count them, but of applications. So um, I'm sitting face to face in these interviews and it's my job in that instance to decide if this candidate is qualified, right? But at some point, on some level, for them to have even filled out the application, they have managed to tell themselves that at least I think I'm somewhat qualified. And then you're going to go, you're going to fill out the application, you're going to turn it in, they're going to say, oh, you can come in for an interview. Now that's kind of affirmation that, yeah, somebody else thinks I might be sort of kind of maybe qualified to. And then, lo and behold, you get the job. Well, damn. I guess I was qualified and that's the mental process that we then transfer so when you're moving from and you're transitioning from let's say corporate to entrepreneurship or you're transitioning um, from even one career within corporate maybe different industries we wait 
for someone else to tell us that we're qualified. And in, even, even if we think we might have the skills and, and, and the tools to do the job, we wait for someone else to tell us that we're qualified. But here's the thing. So you, let's go back to the example with applying for the job, right? So you apply for the job and you get the job. So you've, you, you, you've been affirmed, okay, they're qualified. You walk into that job on your first day, you don't know Jack from Adam and Adam from Squat. You, don't, you, don't, you, you have no clue what you're doing. You have no clue. You don't know how, like it could be the most simple, simplest job. You don't know where the coffee maker is. You don't know where they keep the pens. You don't know where they keep the papers. You haven't organized your desk. You don't have a name tag. You don't know your coworkers' names. You know nothing. You walk in with a clean slate, but yet and still, you're qualified. You're qualified. But we can't seem to apply that same logic to our own, our own entrepreneurial ambitions, our own happiness ambitions, you know, how many times have we said, oh, I want to, you know, I want to, I've always wanted to go hike, whatever, Kilimanjaro, hell, I don't know. But then we talk ourselves out of it because we don't think we're qualified. Oh, I've never hiked that far before. I've never done this. I've never done that. There are certain things that you can do to research. There are certain things that can prepare you and put you in a really great position to have the most skills possible, the most tools in your toolbox possible. But the qualification is mental. It's all mental. It's not about, it's not always about where you've been and where you've come from. Uh, your qualifications are inside of you. And, but, but in order for you to be able to exude that and have the courage and the confidence even to go apply for the job, something had to tell you like, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. And then getting the job is the, is the confirmation that you're qualified. I challenge you at, as you begin, like I said, if you're transitioning from corporate to entrepreneurship, if you're making uh, lateral moves, if you're climbing the corporate ladder especially, you have to believe that you're qualified long before you ever fill out that application. When I started in banking, I started as a switchboard operator, part-time, making $5.25 an hour. When I left the industry, I was a six-figure earner in executive management. Did, did I ever think as that switchboard operator that at some point, at any point in my career, I'd be the first African-American retail banking vice president for one of the largest independently owned financial institutions in the country? Hell to the no, I didn't. Of course not. I didn't know that. But every time... I saw an opportunity to grow and to progress and climb that corporate ladder, I jumped. I didn't hesitate. I didn't wait for them to say, oh, here, come apply for this job. We think you're qualified. No, I threw my name in the hat. And I said, you know what? I'm either going to get it or I'm not. And if I get it, I'm going to crush it. But that was my attitude. My attitude is always, I'm qualified for whatever it is I decide I want to do. Now, do I maybe need to hone up on some skills and get some different information? Absolutely. Of course, you do. Did I have mentors along the way? Oh my gosh, couldn't have done it without my mentors. Did I have coaches along the way? Absolutely, couldn't have done it without my coaches. Did I study? Yes. Is education, formal written education with the piece of paper or a certificate that you're gonna stick in a notebook or hang in a frame on the wall the thing that did it? No. It all started because I always believed I was qualified to do more, to be more, to grow, to excel. And then when the opportunity came to leave corporate and transition into running my own business full time and starting my coaching company, did I start to second guess myself? Yeah, I did, I did. And you know what? I had mentors, I had coaches, I had a hellish board of directors that said, girl, who are you playing with? How do you sound right now? What would you tell your client? And I said, I would tell my client to go for it. And that was the last time I questioned, am I qualified? But it was even as much as I know, 
that instinctive reaction to wait for somebody else to verify and to validate that I'm qualified. It, it's not about that. It's about me knowing that I'm qualified. So it's nothing now to work with you know, retired executives and help them on their transition. It's nothing now to work with um, you know, other leaders on not only their career aspirations, but as an executive and as a leader, one of the hardest things you can do is to build a life around your business. That's hard. And so we talk about that, that, that harmony in between the life, the relationship, and the business. And if this stuff doesn't all equal out and balance out, and you have to have some of this, you got to have a little bit of give and take, but it can't be all work and it can't be all play. But that's hard for executives. Do I question my ability to walk them through that process, to give them the tools that they need and the strategies and, and things to put in their toolbox? Nope, not at all. I have the blueprint. I have the blueprint. All I got to do is share it. All I got to do is share it. And that's what I was telling my client this morning. Like, why are you questioning if you're qualified? Qualification comes in part with learning. Qualification comes in part with experience. But you first have to tell yourself that you deserve to be in that position. You deserve that career. You deserve that level of happiness. You deserve whatever it is that you aspire to, to be or to become. You're qualified for it. You have all the qualifications you need. But if you don't see it, that's what I'm here for. I can help you. I can help you. Because that's what my mentors did for me. That's what my coaches still do for me. When I have questions or I, I start to I start to think like, eh, I'm getting I'm getting wishy-washy, I'm getting wobbly on stuff. They're like, dial in. Focus. You got this. And then I have to remind myself mentally to circle back and say, you know what, girl, you have always been qualified. You have always been qualified. And in some cases, have you ever applied for a job? And they tell you, oh, you're overqualified. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? But guess what? That's them trying to assign your gifts to you. And that's what can't you can't you can't settle for that because if there's a certain job that I want maybe I just want to be a Walmart greeter don't tell me because I have a degree or because I've been an executive or because I've managed multiple locations or because I've owned my, my own business or because all I've done is, is babysitting that I'm not qualified or that I'm overqualified you don't get to excited you don't get to decide that you can decide if you want to hire me or not but you don't get to decide my level of qualification don't ever forget that. Don't let people assign your qualification to you. you. You you assign your own qualification. Absolutely, I'm qualified. Don't discount yourself and don't don't count yourself out of the race and don't second guess yourself to the point where you never throw your hat in. You got this. You're qualified. All right, that's my message for today, guys. Um, if you have questions, because I really am liking this whole question and answer, asked and answered, feel free to inbox me questions. Um, I'll be happy to answer them. As always, the DMs open 24-7, 365, and I look forward to hearing from you. So share the video out. If you missed any of the videos for the last several, what, nine months, 10 months, 11 months? Oh my God, it's almost been a year. Um, make sure you go on to YouTube. The link is uh, included. And make sure you remember to hit the subscribe button. But otherwise, I will catch y'all later. Thanks for living life on Mars and being part of the Ultimate Power Team. I'm out. Have an amazing day, guys. Hey, Donovan, I see you. Have a good day, guys.